What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. So if you guys saw in one of my more recent-ish videos, I lowered my BMW F30 right here behind me on some H&R Sport Springs. Now in that video, I only really focused on the installation. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys what the car looks like when it's finally lowered. And then not only that, I'm going to give you guys a review and my thoughts and opinions about lowering your car, especially on springs. Should you do it on your car or should you not? Spoiler alert, I don't think you should do it. But let me just tell you guys exactly why. So here it is guys, this is my 2017 BMW 330i, aka a BMW F30. As you guys can tell, this car is not stock. Besides the lowering springs, I did a whole bunch of other stuff to it. So although it does look super low because of the springs, I gotta say there's other things that are making it look lower. Like of course these side skirts, and then also the super low front lip which as you guys can probably tell has a little bit of damage on it but that actually has nothing to do with me lowering the car so those things definitely make this car look a little lower than with just the lowering springs but this thing guys looks really really good that's actually not why i think no one should do this mod i actually think aesthetically the lowering springs make the f30 look amazing so here's just a look at the wheel gap on the front you guys can tell probably have like maybe like a finger or two like it's actually not that bad you can definitely go lower but I don't think you should. I think this is actually the perfect ride height. And then of course in the rear, we have a little less wheel gap. Now I think the car is currently on a slant. So let me just quickly show you guys the other side in case it's any different. And yep, just as I suspected, there's a little less wheel gap on this side. Now I can't remember exactly how much H&R says these springs will lower your car. However, this will of course give you a real world idea. And again, guys, it has been two weeks now, so this car has been fully settled. So this should be the final product of what you get with these H&R springs on an F30 with X-Drive. So you guys saw what the car looks like when it's lowered. Now, I personally love it. I think this is the absolute perfect ride height. Now, there are some things I need to fix, like the front lip, because the front lip just makes the car way too low from the front. I need a more subtle front lip, but in terms of the actual actual ride height I think it's perfect I don't want to go any lower than this now the crazy part is you can go lower these are the H&R sport springs they do have super sport springs which lowers your car even more but honestly guys I would not do that this is low enough especially if you live somewhere with bad roads like New York like those super sports will definitely slam your car and then you can't really run any front lip and it's just you're just gonna be scraping everywhere like with this front lip you guys can see how little ground clearance I have just to give you an idea I think it's about like a fist worth and that's after losing like the bottom of this front lip so normally it would be even less and for me this is just way too low for a daily driver and now actually on that I should clarify this is my daily driver guys I also have a G80 M3 which is my fun car so maybe you guys are trying to stance your cars or maybe you're just like you know trying to make it super low if that's the case these are not the springs for you I think these springs are good for a daily driver setup at least in terms of ride height and aesthetic so now that you guys have seen the car lowered on the H&R Sport Springs and you can decide for yourself whether you like them or not again I gave you my opinion I think they're perfect but let me get into the next thing which is really crucial when you lower your car because obviously you're changing the suspension right we do it for aesthetics and we also do it for the performance so now obviously when you lower your car you're gonna get a lower center of gravity you're gonna get a more firm suspension so you might just do it for aesthetics only and everything else is just a consequence of that or maybe you're doing it because you actually want your car to feel more sporty so on that I gotta say if you're doing this just for the performance aspect lowering springs are not the way to go if you want the best possible performance get a set of proper coilovers like Bill Stein or KW because lowering springs are just that they're just the springs they don't give you the actual shock absorbers so the car will never handle as well on just springs as it will on a full set of coilovers however if you're doing something like me where you want the aesthetics and you also want a bit of that performance nothing crazy because again this is a daily driver this is not a track car Springs are probably still right for you. However, how well the springs handle, that's a whole other story. So we're gonna switch to the POV cam, turn on the car, and go for a quick drive, and I'll tell you guys exactly what I mean. When I was looking for a performance on this car, I was not looking for something track ready. Again, if you're looking for something track ready, get a set of coilovers, but if you'd like a more firm ride, a more sporty ride, and you're gonna daily drive your car, springs could possibly be right for you. However, again, I just think these springs are not the best, especially on a car with this type of mileage. So we're gonna go for a drive and I'll tell you guys exactly what I mean. So when driving this car, at least in its stock format, the ride was kind of floaty. That was one of my biggest complaints with this car. Now I will say these springs definitely solve that. The ride is a lot more stiff. It feels a lot more stable, especially in high speeds. 
However, it's a little rough. Now, yes, that is to be expected whenever you lower your car, but it's a lot more than I was anticipating. So the car feels super, super bouncy, uh, which is not great for a daily driver. This kind of reminds me of my old Honda Civic when I lowered it on my H&R Sport Springs as well. Like it just feels, I don't know, like an afterthought, and obviously it is. Like it, to compare it to my M3, which is obviously an extreme, the M3 has an amazing suspension setup. That car feels stiff, but it also feels smooth at the same time. Like it just takes the bumps really well. Whereas this, it feels stiff, which is good. Like on the highway, it feels more stable. However, the bumps really beat it up. And again, guys, I live in New York where the roads are not exactly the best. So let me just quickly throw it into sport mode. So part of that could be because this car is not really old, but it has over 40,000 miles on it. And these cars are known for their shocks kind of going out sooner than they should. So I think part of the reason why this ride feels so bouncy is because my shocks probably need to be replaced. But I'm assuming if you have an F30 and you're planning on putting lowering springs on it, you probably have higher mileage and your shocks are probably in the same condition as mine. So if you combine those blown out shocks with springs that are just, you know, like these, you're probably gonna get less than ideal ride quality. I don't know if you guys can even tell, like I'm hitting some like minor bumps right now and it feels pretty bad. Now, just to clarify, I don't mind a super bumpy ride. I'm kind of used to it, honestly, from my Honda days. And like, I really don't mind a car to be stiff. Like I'd rather it be stiff and have these bumps than be floaty and be really comfortable on the bumps. If I could have the best of both worlds, which I feel like I do in my M3, that'd be great. But in my daily cheap driver like this, you know, I'm not gonna be picky and neither should you. Lowering springs are what, like 250 bucks? Coilovers are like 1500 at least for a good set. So I'm really not complaining for the money but the reason why I am kind of complaining is because whenever my wife or anyone else gets inside this car, they hate it. Again, I don't mind. I'm sure if I have a fellow car guy in here with me, they're not gonna mind as well, but my wife absolutely hates it. So if you are a car guy or a car girl, you're probably really not gonna mind all that much. Like if you're just driving by yourself, you're probably fine. But if you drive your significant other around or if you drive kids around or if you drive like family and friends around, they're probably not gonna like your car. Now, I probably could solve this like bumpy ride issue by just getting some new shocks. But honestly, the reason why I got lowering springs and probably the reason you're gonna get lowering springs is it is cheap. I didn't wanna invest into a full coilover system for this car. This is, again, my cheap daily driver. And I say cheap, you know, um, you know, I don't wanna sound ungrateful. I'm not saying that this is a cheap car or a bad car, but it's just not my car that I wanna spend like thousands and thousands on, which is fine. So I wanted to have something that was a little more cost effective to lower it, hence the lowering springs, and probably same reason why you guys are thinking about getting it as well. Can you guys tell by the bumps, by the way? I'm literally driving over these bumps and I'm feeling every single one of them, but don't know if it translates on camera. But anyways, guys, point is, this is probably not the best way to lower your car. However, it's the cheapest way to lower your car. So the only way that I'll recommend this to you is if you are really on a tight budget, if you're really just after it for the aesthetics, or if you really don't care about how bumpy your ride is, or maybe you have a new set of shocks so your springs are gonna feel a lot better on your car than they do on my car. That is the only way that I can recommend these springs to you. Otherwise, I would just say, guys, get a full set of coilovers. I had KWs on my 435 and I absolutely loved it. I had no complaints with the suspension quality. The ride felt a little firmer, a little more sporty than OEM, but it still took the bumps very, very well. These springs, I feel like with these shocks, it's only gonna get worse and worse over time. But anyways, I just wanted to make this quick video because again, in the last video, I didn't even show you guys what the car looked like when it was lowered. I didn't give you guys my opinion but I waited the two weeks, I let the car settle. You guys got to see what it looks like lowered and I gave you a quick snippet of what I think about them. So if you guys are thinking about lowering your BMW, whether it's an F30 or any other BMW on lowering springs, maybe consider all of these things because obviously lowering springs are cheaper for a reason. But again, maybe that's right for you. I know in this specific case, it was right for me, but also I'm kind of changing my mind about it. So I don't really know. If you wanna see the full installation, I'll leave that video linked somewhere so you guys can check it out. It was definitely an experience. Me and my friend did it all ourselves. In terms of installation, it really wasn't that bad. It's doable, but you kinda of have to be at least some type of like mechanically inclined to do it. I wanna recommend you just doing it if it's the first time you're ever working on your car. But anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you drop it a like, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And with that said, this video is pretty much done and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.